Over the last few years, I've worked with thousands of Amazon sellers. Many of them were successful, doing 10, 50, 100 million plus per year. And many of them were not. Many of them had businesses that were barely producing a couple thousand a month, even though they've been open for years. Many of them were losing money. Many of them haven't had a single successful product. And I spent the previous weekend thinking out the differences between those who succeeded and produced millions or tens of millions of dollars in profit for themselves and the vast majority of people who don't, who end up losing money or just have a stagnating business that barely produces anything per month. And in this video, I'm going to cover the different factors, whether it's like how they started their business, when they started, or how they think about things, their mindset, how they operate, that actually contributes to them being successful or not successful. And I personally find it very interesting. So let's dive right into it. So the first and probably the biggest thing that I've noticed out successful versus unsuccessful Amazon sellers is how they manage their own expectations. Generally, smaller Amazon sellers expect to put a very small amount of effort, money and time into the business and expect a huge outcome, whereas bigger sellers are willing to put a lot more time, effort and money and don't have the same expectations. A good way to sum this up is small Amazon sellers have a champagne vision and a beer standard whereas big Amazon sellers have a champagne vision and a champagne standard. They think big and they know that they want to grow into becoming like a big business and actually producing good revenue and good profits, but they know how long it's going to take, how much money they might lose up front, the risk that they should be willing to take to actually get there, whereas small Amazon sellers barely want to put anything in, but expect huge outcomes and overnight success. So a real life example of this is how smaller Amazon sellers launch their business or new products. Generally, they're just going to Alibaba, they spend zero time on product research or understanding the category they're in or speaking to anyone in that category or even like researching or coming up with their own products or differentiators or their own branding or anything or their own designs even. They're generally just going to pick up any product from Alibaba, ship as few units as possible to the US. Some of these guys are launching with like 50 units or 60 units, which is basically a sample. Uh, and they're just putting these on Amazon US and they're just hoping that they're going to sell out. They don't want to spend anything on ads. They want to get their listings done. They don't want to get real photography done, get real like images, bullet points, A plus content done. They don't want to get a trademark done for brand registry. They just want to put something on Amazon, work on it for like a, an hour or two every week and just expect it to work itself out. Whereas larger Amazon sellers generally are coming up with their own designs, they're improving the products that they're launching, they're coming up with their own brands, they're driving traffic from different places. They might even have a DTC presence that's driving traffic to Amazon as well, through like uh, word of mouth, or just through like the campaigns that they're launching off Amazon, which builds awareness and drives branded traffic to Amazon. They're just putting a lot more effort into producing a good product, getting a price that's better, doing product research, understanding the category that they're getting in, and just building a real business, right? And even then, when they launch it, they expect to, number one, have to invest a lot more upfront into inventory. They're not like doing like 50 units or 40 units at a the time. They're getting a lot more inventory. Uh, they're willing to price very low at the start to gain momentum. They're willing to do buying and enroll a lot of units in and take that cost you know, on day one to try to get some reviews. They're willing to invest a lot into ads. They're willing to lose money for several months in a row to get things off the ground. And they don't expect the product to take off tomorrow. Like they do all of these things. They expect it to take off maybe a year from now. Obviously there are metrics that they have to track and it's not like they're going to keep a loser running for two years just because to say that they like think long-term things get cut off eventually, but they don't have the ridiculous expectations that I see most small setters have. They understand what it takes and they understand the effort that it requires to bring something successful to market and they work on it, right? And when they work on it, they keep working on it and they don't give up at the first sign of trouble. They just keep going and eventually if they launch enough products and they put enough time and effort into perfecting each product, some of them will work out and they're going to grow into a big seven, eight, nine figure business. And that's just how they think. And that's what most small sellers are unable to understand. An extension of this point would be that small Amazon sellers are generally not willing to invest into things and watch them play out. Like if they're running ads, they're checking their net profit every single day on like a two review product and like a very difficult high CPC category. And they're wondering why they're losing like 10 bucks a day. And they're frustrated that their ads haven't produced like a thousand dollars a day in profit within the second week of their product launch. They're not willing to put the actual money up front. They barely want to spend anything on ads and they expect their newly launched fresh product with no reviews to become profitable on day one. And if they're losing like 10, 20 bucks a day, they just want to take it off Amazon because they're not willing to invest that amount of money up front. 
And this is, again, going to play out across everything in their business. They hire cheaper freelancers. They work with worse agencies or they just don't hire any talent and they try to do everything in-house at lower quality. And that's just how they run the entire business. And because of that reason, among other things, it just never takes off. The second thing I've learned about smaller Amazon sellers is they're just not willing to put in half as much effort to learn things. They don't want to learn Amazon. They don't want to learn Amazon ads. They don't want to learn about like listing content and how to get your CVR up. They don't want to learn about their category. They don't want to learn about the manufacturing process for their product and how to get better product or better prices. They don't want to learn anything. They maybe check like a YouTube video for five minutes every few months. And this is small Amazon setters that are failing, right? I should say unsuccessful setters, not small setters, because you could be a small setter because you started yesterday. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to fall into these same patterns. So for unsuccessful setters, they're just not learning anything, even the basic functions of their job. Like if someone's just doing Amazon and it's all that they do and they're an unsuccessful seller, sometimes if you get them on a call and you ask them to screen share, you ask them to check something like business reports, for example, they just don't know where business reports is. Like you have to watch them for five minutes from both to Seller Central to try to find business reports. If you ask them to check their targeting tab on Campaign Manager, they don't know that that exists. And as a bigger seller, maybe that's fine. Like if you're doing 100 million a year, you don't necessarily know where every single button or report exists. But if you're a one man team and you don't know where that stuff exists and all you do is sell on Amazon, it just means you're not learning enough and you're not working hard enough. This is something that I see across all failing sellers. They don't know how everything works. They don't know how their campaigns work. They don't know about the different ad types. They don't know what reports exist and where they can find them. And that's a common pattern across like 80 to 90% of failing Amazon sellers. And that's just with Amazon. If you look at what they're doing off Amazon, they have no clue like how the category works, what type of products work, what their differentiators are, uh, things that they can improve with their actual product and so on. They just don't think out that stuff. The third big thing you'll notice between successful and unsuccessful Amazon sellers is how well they know their numbers. Generally, smaller sellers, even if they know they have an issue, just don't know what the actual numbers are. Like I've had many people reach out to us and they're like, hey, my business isn't profitable or my tackles is too high. And you ask them, like, what's your tackles? And they have no clue. We ask them how much revenue they're doing. They just don't know how much they've sold. We ask them what their ad spend is. They have to go to Amazon to figure out what their ad spend is. They don't know it off the top of their head. Whereas with bigger sellers, they generally have like spreadsheets. They have, and this is obviously a function of them growing bigger and having resources to do all of this stuff. But also from day one, they know all of their cogs. They know how much they're selling. They know which variations work well, which ones don't work well. They know what their tackles is. They know what they're doing in terms of revenue spend and net profit every single month. And they can tell you this stuff off the top of their head, right? And this is even true at a very big scale. Like if someone's Amazon native, they're not selling on any other platform. Like I've seen people who know their data down to the ASIN for all of their major ASINs, which is for some people like 50 plus ASINs. And they know all of their stuff. Again, it's not normal to know every single number and it's completely understandable if you don't have your cogs memorized for your entire catalog. But for some of these smaller sellers, they have like a two or three product catalog and they just don't know what their cogs are. They don't know what their margins are and they don't know what they spend on ads, how much revenue they make, what their profit looks like. They just have no clue. And some of them know that they have an issue with losing money, but they're not bothered to figure out how much money they're losing, right? And the problem never gets solved. What doesn't get measured doesn't get fixed. Right. Whereas the bigger sellers know everything cold. And that's a huge difference that I've actually seen between successful and unsuccessful Amazon sellers. So the fourth big difference that I've noticed actually relates to a metaphor or analogy that I've heard a couple of months back. And it relates to golf. Actually, I don't know if you guys have tried to golf before or not, but generally when you're just starting out, you tend to hold your club too tight. And when you go for a swing, more often than not, you're going to hit the ground and it's going to reverberate and you're going to get like the entire force of the club hitting the ground go through your hands and it starts to hurt after a few times and your ball doesn't really go that far and it just doesn't feel that fun you're not that good at golf and it just hurts a lot if you've been doing it for like an hour two hours straight your hands start hurting and you're not really enjoying the game and what you learn over time is you have to hold the club more lightly right and if you hold it more lightly you stop hitting the ground the ball goes a lot farther you don't really have to worry about hurting your hands anymore. And this analogy kind of applies to Amazon setters. In a way, I know this is all philosophical and stuff, but smaller Amazon setters tend to hold their golf club too tight, right? Like they're, again, like they've spent five bucks on ads and they want to pause it immediately 
because that's five bucks down the drain. Or they're selling a few units unprofitably and now they're worrying. Or they hired an agency and sales didn't go up in a week and a half. And now they're panicking and they're looking to fire them. Or like a million other examples are more jittery. Uh, they're trying to control things too much in a way that ends up hurting their business. Like they're overreacting to things. They're not letting things play out. Uh, they're making things more difficult than they have to be. And that's something that I've noticed with smaller Amazon sellers, not even just unsuccessful ones. Some of these people do end up being successful, but the people who, and they grow, and once they grow, they stop being like this. And they understand that you have to be more laid back. You have to hold the golf club a little lighter and just let things take their natural course. Um, but the smaller ones, and especially the unsuccessful small ones who don't have experience running a real business before are usually very jittery and they, you know, hire an agency like three days ago. And then, you know, they're in there changing their stuff for them. Like they're still launching campaigns alongside their agency and they're still pausing and unpausing their campaigns for them. And they're trying to add keywords, remove keywords, and they're just not letting other people do their jobs. This is something that I think probably most agency owners and most like software company owners can attest to when working with smaller or unsuccessful sellers. So I think, Again, this is more philosophical and it's not really technical, but smaller Amazon sellers tend to hold the golf club too tight and it ends up hurting their business and also, I think, probably ruining their day just because it's not fun to do or to operate your business like this. The fifth and final difference that I've noticed is actually more technical and it has to do with timing. A lot of the bigger Amazon sellers launched like five, six, seven, eight, ten plus years ago when things were a lot easier. Uh, it was a lot less competitive. There were less Chinese sellers. People didn't have as many reviews. The fees on Amazon were lower. PPC costs were lower. It was just a lot easier to run and scale a profitable business on Amazon. And most of the unsuccessful businesses were launched within the last one, two or three years, right? Obviously, if a business has been around for a decade, it has gotten more time to like blossom. And obviously that has its own effects. But generally people who launch today even if they manage to last for another five years, aren't going to be as successful as people who just launched five years ago. Because five years ago, it was just a lot easier to launch and run a successful Amazon brand. So that's one of the more technical reasons. And that's why I generally recommend people who are looking to launch new businesses to try to find new avenues. Like the people who I know who are doing 50 million, 60 million plus per year, even the people close to 100 million plus per year, all launched their businesses basically as soon as Amazon opened like selling for third party sellers, right? That's how old some of these people are. One person that I interviewed on this channel, I think a couple of weeks ago at this point, was selling on eBay back in like 2006 and Yahoo stores and Overstock and all of these other platforms. And they got into Amazon early too. And they were able to grow their business a lot because traffic was cheaper back then, competition was lower, online wasn't as big. And that's usually what it requires to succeed. Like a lot of the businesses that are doing well today that were launched recently are all in the AI realm because AI is taking off. And again, everything's new. A lot of products weren't made yet. A lot of ideas weren't used yet. A lot of people are just willing to try different AI products because they don't know what's out there and they're just looking to discover. The category aspect matters a lot too. Like if you launched a vitamin C product in 2018 with no off Amazon presence and no differentiators, either with the actual product or the price, probably wouldn't have done well anyway. But if you launch something else, like drapes, for example, it might have done a bit better. Uh, if you launched other items, maybe like home and kitchen, those could have done better and you could have built a pretty sizable business. So you also have to take out category if you want to succeed on Amazon because certain things are just very difficult to succeed with or might just be out of your budget to succeed with. Like if you want to succeed with vitamin C, it's going to be very tough, right? And unless you have a huge budget and an off Amazon brand, and many other factors helping you win, you're probably just not going to win because there's no reason for you to win in a category like vitamin C or like in a product niche like vitamin C where all of the offerings are already there. Everyone already has reviews. The brands there are well known. Like there's no place for a new offering in that category unless it has some type of differentiator or off Amazon brand that's impactful enough, right? That's it. These are the main five reasons uh, I've seen people either succeed or fail this applies a lot to other businesses as well. Like if you're early in a type of business, you'll generally do better if you can stick it out for like a decade plus. You know, if you're holding the golf club a bit tighter, you're generally going to do well in any business. If you know your numbers, you're going to do well. 
if you learn well, you're going to do well. If you have good expectations of the amount of work and investment you're going to have to put in compared to the actual outcome, you're going to do well. So these apply to many other businesses and Amazon's a business. So the same thing that applies to running an agency will generally also apply to running an Amazon business. And if you're an Amazon seller, take from this what you will. You know, If some of the bad things apply to you, try to change them. I know some of it is just like the beginner's mindset and I probably suffered from some of this myself when I was starting in business because especially I got started at a young age I didn't know what was the correct thing to do and what was the incorrect thing to do. So take from this what you will. If there are things that you can fix out how you operate your own business, I'd recommend you do that. And I try to look internally to try to explain why my business isn't working rather than try to you know, blame external factors. Like maybe I'm just not using the right agency, for example, right? Like if your entire business isn't working, it's probably not the agency that you're using. It's probably other things that have caused that too. So again, try to apply these things um, to yourself and to your business and see how it can cause improvements because it's going to make your life better if you operate like a successful Amazon seller. And it's also going to help your business as well. So I hope you found this useful and thank you so much for watching the video. Have a great day. See you guys next week.